Welcome to the top 10 Luffy fights in One Piece. Number 10. Luffy vs NL. Kicking off this list on a high note, we have the conflict that served as the climax of the entire Skypiea saga. Luffy vs NL is actually a very unique piece of combat and quite unlike most of what we're going to see here today, because it's a bit of an odd pairing. On the one hand, you have NL, who up until this point in the series was more or less completely untouched, with the exception being hit by Wiper. However, the one natural counter to his absurd abilities just so happened to be this rubber boy, rendering NL unable to truly fight at his maximum potential. But at the same time, Luffy was wasn't able to steamroll NL either, because his godlike opponent had access to what is still to this day one of the most potent uses of observation haki we've ever seen, which made it nigh on impossible for Luffy to actually hit NL for quite a bit of the fight. So our combatants were at a bit of an odd stalemate until NL finally used his devil fruit in a more creative manner, choosing to seal Luffy's hand in a ball of gold and effectively forcefully remove him from the battlefield. However, in doing so, NL also sealed his own fate and eventually copped his own giant ball of gold straight to the body and ending his tenure as a villain. But of course, my favorite moment is the fact that Luffy used this finishing blow to ring the golden bell of Shandora, thus killing three birds with one stone, fulfilling Wiper's desire, Cricket's curiosity, and Enel's much needed defeat, all at once. It was a wonderfully conducted battle and something that I very fondly remember to this day. Number nine. Luffy versus Gekko Moria. Traveling to the Florian Triangle now, we have the deciding conflict of Thriller Bark, in which Luffy solos a rather foolish but incredibly powerful Gekko Moria. So of all the fights on today's list, this is the one that reminds me most of a video game-like boss battle. It's a very typical final level boss absorbs incredible power, becomes big beast thing, and you just have to casually take care of business. Although I suppose the best part about this fight to me is that it is a race against time. I mean, it's clear that Luffy is superior to Moria in this form, and if it was a battle of attrition, then Luffy would take it no contest. However, he is charged with defeating Moria before the sun rises, which if he failed, would not only kill him, but a huge chunk of his crew as well, due to Moria having stolen their shadows. So as much as we're never quite on the edge of our seats in regards to Moria being a real threat, the intensity is there through the time aspect. And due to that, Luffy also uses some fun techniques designed more to extract shadows, and it's just a really nice spin on the typical final fight of an arc. Number eight. Luffy versus Arlong. Stepping even further back into the days of East Blue, this battle is one of the crowning achievements of the era. I have to say that I think I find this fight so satisfying, largely in part thanks to the dramatic stakes that Oda had set up in terms of Nami. It's very difficult to think about this conflict in isolation, and whenever my mind wanders to Luffy versus Arlong, Nami's pain and suffering always comes with it. As a result though, every hit Luffy lands on Arlong strikes me just that little bit harder. It's more satisfying to watch Luffy beat up the evil shark dude, much more so than most opponents, because the emotional release is almost euphoric, and that final move, knocking Arlong through several floors and destroying the entirety of Arlong Park in the process is a marvel of visual storytelling in my opinion. What really gets me though is Luffy's speech about not being able to wield swords, cook food, navigate the ocean, or even lie, and then his profound resolution that the one thing he can do is beat Arlong. That gives me chills every time I think about it. Plus somehow, this fight also contains a whole ton of levity with Luffy doing weird stuff like putting Arlong's teeth in his mouth, so it has literally everything. Action, comedy, and and drama, all at the highest levels portrayed in the series at the time. This was the beginning of the golden age of One Piece and one hell of a fine fight even to this day. Number seven. Luffy versus Doflamingo. So what isn't to love about this? Dress Rosa was an awfully long slog, but getting to this point in the arc very much made it all worth it. As one of my favorite characters in the series, watching Doflamingo going up against Luffy at long last was a fantastic treat. And plus this was also the very first time we got to see Gear Forth in action, which was probably one of the most hype events I can remember in my entire history of reading the series weekly. Also like the Gekko Moria fight, Oda also chose to imbue this clash with a time sensitive element, being the point at which the birdcage would close and kill, I think, literally everyone. And after an arc that had taken some painstaking time to introduce us to literally everyone, this made the stakes pretty damn high. So much so that the end of this conflict had to take place in the air, and that King Kong gun was just perfection. In the manga, anyway. I will say that it was a bit disappointing in the anime because they did that thing they do where they artificially extended the clash to the point where it lost all impact. Because, you know, it should have been punch, break, swift defeat. Kind of like what happened to Shiki in Strong World, actually. But instead it was like, punch, block, one minute of struggle, and then somehow break, I don't know, that was just uh, a Regardless, this battle was still brilliant, and matchups like this are undoubtedly a huge reason why I continue to be heavily invested in this world. 
Number six, Luffy versus Bellamy, Jaya Island Edition. So here we go, one of the most memorable moments in the entire series. However, before we discuss that, what has really compelled me to put this fight on this list so high up is much less the punch that ended everything, but more so the wonderful way in which it was set up. Bellamy is a perfect example of a classic anime dick. He's arrogant, thick-headed, and powerful enough to be a menace, but nowhere near enough to pose an actual threat. And a lot of Jaya was spent with the idea that this dude bra was just throwing his weight around with no consequence, and he even got to beat up Luffy and Zoro directly without them so much as lifting a finger to stop him. But eventually, Mr. Bellamy took it just that one step too far, resulting in a light speed fall from maniacal grace as he was put in his place with a single punch. Although I think that this fight actually ranks quite highly for me, in retrospect, due to my knowledge of how this encounter changed Bellamy into, dare I say it, a character that I really like now. So it's just such a solid battle in the series and a splendid performance by our captain. Number five. Luffy versus Usopp. This is always a painful one to talk about, but at the same time, this really was a defining event in the series for both contenders, crafting a rift in their friendship that culminated in a full on fist fight. This bout stands out quite a lot because it's one of the very few battles in which it was not satisfying in any way to see Luffy land a blow on his opponent. Like this wasn't Arlong where every punch was this joyous release. It was quite the opposite actually. Every hit that landed courtesy of either Luffy or Usopp only made this situation hurt that much more. More. And that dramatic weight is conveyed so effectively through Luffy at the conclusion of the clash, where even though he technically came out on top, it was clear that there were no winners in this situation. But despite it being one of the more painful events in the series to watch or read through, it was still put together masterfully from an aesthetic point of view. So oddly enough, it was still great to see whilst being simultaneously torturous. A truly outstanding Luffy fight, without a doubt. Number four, Luffy versus Bluno. All right, so this fight always takes me back to high school because back in the day, I would rewatch this fight over and over and over again. And in fact, you know what? To this day, it is probably the fight that I have rewatched the most because the moment this episode aired, I was stunned because I was waiting to see how Gear Second would be animated and it absolutely floored me. The speed in this altercation was like nothing the series had seen before and Luffy's hits felt so incredibly devastating. Plus narratively, this conflict had a lot of substance to it as it was essentially the turn of the tide for the Water 7 saga, which up until this point had been incredibly dark and despairful. I mean, CP9 were this group of unfathomably powerful figures at the time, and watching Luffy rise to their level and bring down the Cowman meant everything. It signaled that this counter-attack was in full swing and that the rest of the Straw Hats were also going to rise to the occasion. Plus, even though it occurred during any Slobby, which was a notable period in which the anime started to decline, this was still put together phenomenally from start to finish. In fact, I'd have to say that the only thing this clash has going against it is that it does end somewhat anticlimactically with Bluno just eventually collapsing from the jet bazooka damage. But that really is the only thing I could even come close to calling a flaw in this incredible exchange. Number three, Luffy versus Rob Lucci. Sticking with any Slobby for now, we have the main event, which brings us everything that the new fresh concept of Gear Second did in the Bluna fight, but adds the emotional weight of Robin and even Usopp behind it as well, in much the same way that Arlong was carrying the weight of Nami, just like on steroids. And to this day, I think that Luffy versus Lucci is one of the most brutal slugfests we've ever seen in the series. This wasn't a fight between weird paramecia powers or having to come up with a creative way to counter a Logia user. This was almost entirely pure brawn and could only be decided by way of whose endurance gave in first. Plus, in terms of spectacle, this was the first properly seen use of Gear 3rd in the series, which was portrayed superbly, and the final attack is easily one of the greatest finishes we've ever been privileged enough to witness. Jet, Gatling, Gun. What a way to end everything. And full credit to the anime in both the original series and the episode of Merry for making this one hell of a moment to remember. Number two, Luffy versus Crocodile, Round three. So I'll say this straight up. This is the fight that convinced me that I was going to be a lifelong fan of the series. Everything up until now had been great, but the climax of the Alabaster Saga was a high point in One Piece that has been so incredibly hard to replicate going forward. Not impossible to replicate and not even impossible to surpass, but this fight just had everything going for it. To begin with, it was the first time that Luffy had really been pushed to his limits. Compared to this fight, everything before it looks like a comfortable victory for him. But this was Crocodile and he'd already lost to this man twice. A man who still reigns as one of the most popular villains within the series history, with an incredible design and presenting an impossible power to overcome. But as always, Luffy rose to the occasion, 
confronting him for a third time and even using his own blood as a counter to Crocodile's Lokia powers. This fight was brutal, it was desperate, and it was series defining. When after all of this, Luffy exclaims that he would surpass Crocodile and punched him into absolute infinity through bedrock and beyond, saving not only the kingdom of Alabasta, but also his dream of becoming the Pirate King. From start to finish, this battle is engraved in my mind. And yet I should point out that we still haven't quite reached the pinnacle of Luffy combat. Number one, Luffy versus Katakuri. All right, so despite being the number one place, this is a bit of a weird one, because when I was reading this fight weekly, I was a bit hot and cold on it. As you can tell if you rewatch my chapter reviews. On the one hand, I love the artwork and the choreography, and in that respect, I think that this battle stands out as one of the greatest in all of Shonen, let alone One Piece as an individual series. What I didn't like at the time was, well, the time. It took an awfully long time to complete, reading weekly, and there were points where it just didn't feel like it was getting anywhere. But but in retrospect, that was very much the point. The idea was to showcase Luffy in an extended bout, getting crushed every step of the way in pursuit of acquiring a new skill and eventually trumping his opponent, not through strength, but through sheer force of will. And a lot of people will argue with me about this, but to this day, I believe that Luffy could not have won this fight with power alone. Katakuri trumped him in every aspect, but what Luffy managed to do was so much more impressive than simply beat an opponent. Luffy managed to change Katakuri's entire being during this fight and flip his way of life on its head, simply by refusing to give up against an opponent who clearly outclassed him. And yeah, I know it's not quite as simple as that. That's why I have a whole video explaining this fight, which you should absolutely check out. However, there has never been anything like this in One Piece before, and I highly doubt that we'll ever see anything like it again. This transcends the concept of a fight by entwining physical and psychological combat. Physically, Luffy lost, but psychologically, he won. And of everything on this list today, this display is what makes me truly believe that Luffy will one day, against all odds, become the Pirate King. 